Hello, welcome to Chapter 8, Homework Questions 17 through 23. Question 17, on the graph paper, graph triangle ABC, given the three coordinates. So let's go ahead and start there. We have the point 3, 0, the point 2, 7, and the point 6, 4. All right, what is the most specific name for this triangle? Prove your answer is correct using both slope and side length. So here's the triangle that we're looking at. It looks like potentially it could be a right triangle with angle C being a right angle and maybe isosceles if the lengths of AC and, and BC are the same. So let's go ahead and try to first prove that AC is perpendicular to BC, which means we need to look at the slopes. And we can just do our slope triangles here. Um, we can go down uh, four units and over uh, negative three. So that's a positive slope of four thirds. So AC has a slope of four-thirds. And then BC, uh, we can go up three units and over to the left four. So BC has a slope of negative three-fourths. Uh, because these are opposite reciprocal, we know that the lines are perpendicular. So it does form a right angle there. So we do know it's a right triangle. Now the next question is, um, is AC and BC have the same length? <clears throat> well, we've already set up our triangles, and, and that's going to be the hypotenuse of each of those. And since it's a 3-4 triangle, then we know that the hypotenuse will be a 5. So 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared. And so BC has a length of 5, and so does AC. And so that's about using the Pythagorean theorem. So not only do we know it's a right triangle, we also know that it is isosceles. So it's an isosceles right triangle. Question 18, the exterior angles of a quadrilateral are labeled A, B, C, and D in the diagram below. Find the measures of A, B, C, and D, and then find the sum of the exterior angles. So you can see that they create a lot of straight angles here. So we can take 180 minus 84, uh, 180 minus 97, 180 minus 93, and then we'll have to figure out the fourth angle of a quadrilateral, but we know that we can split these into triangles, or at least if we forgot, then we know that 180 plus 180 is 360, so we can figure out what that fourth angle is as well. So I went ahead and set kind of everything up. I found uh, A, B, and C by doing the 180 minus the angle in terms of the straight angle. And then down here, you can see that I added the four angles up inside the quadrilateral to equal 360, and I put E as 86 degrees. And then to find D, you can take uh, D plus E, which is 86 degrees, is equal to 180. So then when you subtract 86, D is equal to 94 degrees. So we have D. C, B, and A, so we've answered that, but then it also wants us to find the sum of the exterior angles, so we're going to add all those up. So we have 87, A is an exterior angle, plus B is 83, plus C is 96, and plus D is 94 degrees, and if you add all those up, you will get 360 degrees. Question 19, find the area and perimeter of the shape below show all of the work. So the shape that we're looking at, just to make sure we're clear, is here, across, and there. Um, so you can see there are some right triangles, 3, 3, and then we can figure out that one by doing Pythagorean theorem. So 3 squared plus 3 squared is equal to, uh, we'll just call it C squared. So 9 plus 9, which is 18. And then you can take the square root. So it would be the square root of 18, and then we can approximate that so we can find the, the perimeter as well. So C will be approximately 4.24. Uh, we can do Pythagorean theorem again on this side. That would be 3 squared plus 6 squared is equal to, uh, we'll just call this one D squared this time, 9 plus 36. And so this is what I called C, and then this one was D. So that would be 45, and then you can take the square root. So it would be the square root of 45, and then if we take the square root of 45 and approximate it, we will get 6.71. 
So we have that length, and then we still are missing this other length here, which, let's see if we can create a right triangle from there. Now this whole length right here is 5, but we also know this length over here is 2, which means this has to have a side of 3. If the bottom length is 3 and 6, which give you a total of 9, and this is 3, then that means this has to be 6 as well. So we already did that one below the 3, 6, which was the square root of 45. So this is also approximately 6.71. So therefore, the perimeter, if we just add up all those sides, we have, um, let me maybe get rid of some of this stuff so we can see a little bit here. So we have the length of 5 to start with. So we have 5 right here. Then we'll add the 4.24. So 5 plus 4.24 plus this one we found to be 6.71 plus the 2 and then the 3. So 2 and then 3. And then this one was also 6.71. So if we added all those up, we have 27.66. And this is measured in miles, so that would be miles. It also wants us to find the area. So we can find the area by breaking the figure up into, into different parts if we need to. For example, we could go ahead and find the area of that triangle. We do have the height as 3, and then the base is 3 and 9. 3 plus 9 here on the bottom you can see, so that would be 9. So we could definitely find the area of that one. Um, we could also break it up into a rectangle, and that would be 2 and 9, so we could find the area of that one. And then this one, we said that this was a length of, if it's a total of 5 and this one over here is 2, this has a height of 3, and then the base on this one would be this distance. Once again, that would be a 6, which we had earlier. So we can break it up into three different areas, it appears. Uh, the first one, we'll do the bottom triangle here, right here. So that's one-half base, which is 9 times the height of 3. Uh, then our next area would be the rectangle, 2 times 9. And then the third area would be the triangle on top, and that would be one-half base times height. So on this one right here, we would get 13.5. 2 times 9 is 18. And then half of 6 is 3, 3 times 3 is 9. So if we add all of these up, then we will get an area that is equal to 40.5 square miles. And that finds both parts, the area and the perimeter. Question 20. Crystal is a maze. She graphed triangle ABC using the points A, B, and C as labeled. Then she rotated the triangle ABC 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin to find a new triangle A prime, B prime, and C prime. So let's go ahead and do that. I already have plotted the points A, B, and C. And now we're going to rotate this counterclockwise 90 degrees. So you can also use that tracing paper as well to rotate this. Um, but remember, from the origin, we're going to rotate it 90 degrees, and that would move point A to 1,5. So this would be A prime. It would move point B to, which one's B? 3, negative 7. That would move it to 7, 3. So that would be B prime. And then C prime, uh, C was at 6, negative 2. So that becomes, so it would move up to 2, 6. And that would become C prime. So here would be your new triangle with a rotation around the origin. Then it says, meanwhile, her teammate took a different triangle, uh, triangle TUV, and rotated it 90 degrees clockwise about the origin to find a uh, new triangle T prime, U prime, and V prime. Amazingly, the two new triangles from each student ended up exactly, up, uh, sorry, ended up using exactly the same points. Name the coordinates of the vertices of triangle TUV. So if TUV was rotated 90 degrees clockwise, and it ended up being the same triangle as A prime, B prime, and C prime, then let's take A prime, C prime, and B prime, and instead of rotating it 90 degrees clockwise, we're going to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise so that we can find where the original T, U, and V was. So once again, take uh, 
your triangle A prime, B prime, and C prime, and rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise to find T, U, and V. So A would become negative 5, 1, and actually this will represent uh, T. Point C would become, uh, let's see, negative 6, 2, and that would represent U. And then point B looks like it would be negative 3, 7. And so that would be right here. And that would represent V. So if you take this triangle and you rotate it um, 90 degrees clockwise, which would be going back in this direction, then it should land on A prime, B prime, and C prime. So it says name the coordinates of the vertices of T, U, and V. So T would represent the point negative 5, 1. U would represent the point negative 6, 2. And V would represent the point negative 3, 7. And once again, if you have that tracing paper or patty paper, that will help in terms of your rotations. And I just realized, not that it's a huge deal, I... I have these switched around. Same thing over here. This actually should have been U up here and then V here. Just by the order that it went in. So this would have been V and then the bottom would have been U at negative 3, 7. Question 21. Write an equation for each of the following sequences. So you can tell that this sequence you're going to be adding 15 which means it is arithmetic sequence so we can write it as a linear. Uh, this is term 1 and then term 2. So we know that the, the growth, the slope, is growing by 15. And the, you know, the B value, the y-intercept, you would have to go back another 15 to negative 45 to find term 0 or your initial. And so then we can write our sequence T of n is equal to um, 15 n and then negative 45. So you're seeing that in arithmetic form or linear form. You could also use first term form. That way you don't have to go back to the negative 45. So you can say t of n is equal to, and you'll still use 15, but it'll be n minus 1. So that way when you plug in 1, it's 15 times 0, and then you would just use your first term minus 30. And if you simplify that, it'll be 15n minus 15, minus 30 still minus 45. So you don't need both of them. That's one example of the way you could write it. Here's another example of the way that you could write it. Also, you could use a different notation, A of N. So we've used that notation before as well. So that's a third way that you could write it. Um, we could use recursive form. I guess I can show you that as well. That would be T of recursive form is using, um, you have to have the previous term to find the next term. So T of N plus 1 would be the next term. That has to equal... Um, the previous term and then you would just do plus 15 but if you remember on recursive you have to say where you're starting so I'm going to say t of 1 is equal to negative 30 so that whole thing is a part of the recursive form so once again lots of different options pick the one that uh, works for you best on b we're going to multiply by one third each time so you don't want to say divide by 3 because we want the multiplier, so B is the multiplier, so that's one-third. And then A represents your initial. So if I go back once again to term zero, that would be 27, because we're going to work backwards. And so we can say T of N is equal to your initial, which is where you start, times your multiplier raised to the nth power. And once again, I could go and use different notations and things like that. This one I'm just going to write one way, but, but it does work all four ways, just like the first one. Question 22, Suzette started to set up a proof to show that if line segment BC is parallel to line segment EF, so BC is parallel to EF, and AB is parallel to DE, so AB parallel to DE, and AF is equal to DC, so AF is right here is equal to CD then line segment BC must be congruent to line segment EF 
And we're going to examine her work below and then complete her missing statements and reasons. So the first statement, you have all that stuff that we just listed. That was all of the given information. So we can list that all in one line, and then we can just write given. The measure of BCF, so let's mark this. BCF would be this angle right here, is equal to the measure of EFC, which would be this measure right here, and EDF. EDF would be this one right here, is equal to the measure of CAB, which would be this one right here. So how do we know um, that that's true? Well, remember, we have our parallel lines, and so if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, um, then alternate interior angles are congruent, and that's what you have on each of these that, that you have that are parallel. So you just have to follow the sides of uh, the parallel sides and the transversals and those will be your alternate interior angles for both of those angles. Alright, next one it has the reason that we're going to be using the reflexive property and if you remember AF and CD are congruent but also this line segment right here FC is congruent to itself so we can say that FC and we'll say that the measure since we're using the measure FC is equal to FC so they have the same measurement that's the reflexive property. We can then say AF plus FC is equal to FC plus DC. And this is one we haven't done a lot with, but the additive property of equality, and that just means adding the same amount to both sides of an equation, keeps the equation true. So um, once again, you have that if FC is equal to FC, and you add AF, and you add DC, um, since those are you know have the same measure, then it's not going to change the equation. Then we also know if that's the case, we know AC um, is equal to DF. So once again, AC is equal to DF. So AC is this whole length right here, because you added on that one part, and then DF is that whole segment right there. So we know they're equal because of the segment addition. Um, and then triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So ABC is right here. DEF is right here. And we know that because of angle side angle congruency. So remember we have the angles and then the side lengths here as well. And then because we know that they're congruent, we know that their parts are also congruent, which means we can prove that BC, line segment BC, is congruent to line segment EF. And once again, congruent triangles uh, is equal. This should be congruent parts. Question 23, multiple choice. Which equation below is not a correct statement based on the information in the diagram. So 3x plus y is equal to 180. And once again, we have parallel lines. So 3x plus y, this angle and this angle, they're not congruent. They are supplementary. So that is a true statement. So part A is fine. Uh, B, we have 2x minus 1 is equal to 4 minus x. This is a straight angle. So those should actually add up to 180. So that one doesn't work. C, 2x minus 1 is equal to 5y minus uh, 10. Because we have the parallel lines, those would be alternate interior angles. So this angle should be congruent to this one. So that one is good. And then D, 2x minus 1. 2x minus 1 plus 3x. So this angle right here plus this angle right here is equal to 180. And that is true, similar to... Um, to part A, 3x plus y equals 180, because those are the same side interior. So that one's good. All of these are correct. That's not true. So which one is not correct? That would be B.